I did a complete frame off restoration on this G body cutlass. It's a 1988. I went through hell and back. Any problem that you could imagine that you would run into, I ran into it. So I wanted to share a couple tips in this video about rear trailing arms. I ran into a problem. When it was all said and done, my tire was too far towards the front of the vehicle. So I started out with these UMI non-adjustable trailing arms for the lowers, but adjustable uppers. So I had to bite the bullet and get some adjustables. And they were already set and tightened down, so I had a hard time figuring out which way the bolts went to loosen them and tighten them. So I'm going to show you guys what I did. And I'll show you a couple other tips and some issues that I ran into. So first of all, this is the driver's side, and this is how you will tighten that jam nut. And that's how you loosen it. This is on the driver's side. Obviously, this is towards the rear end. So that's how you tighten and loosen those. For the uppers, that's how you tighten it, and that's how you loosen that jam nut. Up here, I believe it's opposite. Yeah. And then towards you is how you will tighten it down. I'll share a couple other tips while I'm making this video. So here's the breathing spout on the Quick Performance 9 inch. And this is what I did. I just got a hose. And I ordered that off Amazon, it's just a breather. And I tucked that up in there. Doesn't rattle or anything, hasn't caused me any problems. This is the passenger side. So that's how you're gonna tighten that jam nut. That's how you're gonna loosen it towards the axle. This is the chassis side. That's tightening the jam nut, that's loosening it. Passenger side uppers. That's how you tighten it towards the axle. That's how you loosen it. And away from here is how you tighten it. Now take note. All I did was take the shocks off why it was already on the car with those non-adjustable lowers. And I put it on jack stands. And I was able to pretty much turn these by hand once they were loose. The same with the bottom trailing arms. These springs are from Eaton in Detroit. Me and my friends always use these two inch above ride height springs for our old schools because we ride with stereos in the trunk and it'll make your car look like it's squatting. I will tell you, when you do any type of 
car restoration. You definitely want to have some good friends in your corner, and I've been blessed to have some awesome friends. And there's some guys that make some really tight videos too. If you're doing a frame off on a G body or any frame car, I would uh, definitely recommend you watch this guy, Papo702 on YouTube. I watched that video and I was like, man, I can do that. He's right. And I did it. So next, the thing with these two inch above ride height springs is it stretches the original shock replacement stretches them out to the max. So my best friends, Mike and Kevin, came up with an idea. Since the S10 has so many comparable parts, like for the front control arms, they went with S10 shocks from a 2000 four wheel drive. So the issue I ran into is these shocks are too fat on the bottom. You see the contrast? So the problem was it was rubbing up against these caliper bolts. Bam. This is the solution. Shock relocation brackets. You can get them online. I think Spawn Performance. I bought some from them, but this was the problem I ran into. These are for a G-Body. Check that out. They fit right on there, no problem. But they do not fit on the S10s. A lot of things that you know people don't take into consideration. So I bent it and did some contortionist shit to it and pretty much fucked it. But my best friend Mike had a good idea. He said, go ahead and uh, take a flap disc to that and grind all that down. So I did it and it does work back in the game. But I don't know about you, but I don't like modifying brand new parts like that. So fortunately I work for a fab shop and we have some of the most talented people in the business. Whatever you could possibly dream of, we can make. So anyway, I had the drafting department whip up some uh, slightly different mods and made one a little wider, fit like a charm. So I don't know exactly if that's all gonna work how it's supposed to, but I'll make another quick video and you can use those. So these shocks are definitely longer. Right? So that's going to give you the right distance you need with two inch above ride height shocks. Now the company will say, no, you don't need that because once you put the weight in the trunk, it's going to come back down to ride height and it'll be fine. But come on. Look at the difference. This shock is nothing in comparison, right? This is gonna give you a nice smooth factory ride with all that weight in the trunk. Because I would say anybody that's like riding with a serious stereo like we do, that's about 500 pounds in the trunk with your amps, your box, your secondary battery. So that's what we came up with. I can't think of anything else. So if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to respond and get back to you, show you what I did. One thing I will tell you, if you do a frame off restoration and you have to like do some welding on the frame, like I had to for the body mount locations, and you get ready to put your body back down on the frame, you have to make sure that you take note of how the body was sitting originally in location because Mine lined up and it went right back down on the frame, no problem. But it was a little 
I'd say maybe, and it plays a big part. It was probably about a quarter inch offset to the back of the frame. The car body was more to the back of the frame. I noticed that right away because I had to add more shims when I put the lower bumper on. And then when I went to put the front together, I didn't have any shims. I didn't need them. So I was like, man, something ain't right there. But it all worked out anyway. There, There is room for adjustment, so that was cool. But it is going to play a role in your door gap. So I would suggest, like, you get it right the first time so you're not fighting putting your front end back together like I did. That was a bitch. So you can do it yourself in your garage, obviously. I did this whole frame off in the garage and in the driveway. So if you got any questions, hit me up. I'll be more than happy to help you because we don't have the money to be putting our cars in the shop. You got to do it yourself and you can do it. No problem. Another thing I had to do was buy new emergency brake cables and pretty much customize them and put them in. I got a kit from, what was it? Uh, Willwood, and then used the original new replacement, which I bought like five of those till I got the right one for the front of the car. So if you have any questions about running an e-brake, hit me up on that too. Or fuel lines, brake lines. I had to deal with all those issues. Everything on this car is brand new. Brand new tranny, new blueprint motor, fuel tank, body mounts. So if you have a question, I'm sure I can answer it. If I can't answer it, I got some masters in the trade that can.